This is my personal editing PC. It's beautiful, right? Wrong. It's an absolute disaster and it cannot be allowed to stand like this any longer. Be Quiet introduces a new way to keep your PC build cool, silent, and looking fresh. Meet the Silent Base 802, available in black or white, windowed, or silence focused. Each case comes with interchangeable top and side panels, a fully kitted out front I.O. selection, three Pure Wings fans, and a completely modular interior layout that lets you even run the system inverted. With support for up to 420mm radiators or a full complement of hard drives, make the Silent Base the start of your next PC build. Check out the link below or head to BeQuiet.com to learn more. So if you guys are new here to the channel and you like this kind of PC build content, in fact, we built this one on the channel a few months ago. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and also consider following me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. So clearly that intro was pretty sarcastic. This is still an amazing machine. For those of you unfamiliar, and like I said, we did build this on the channel earlier this year. This is a Ryzen Threadripper 3970X based system. It's got an Asus ROG Strix TRX40 motherboard along with an MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. The whole thing is plumbed up with a custom loop. We've got brads on the top and on the bottom, a full custom set of extensions from Nsource Customs and a whole bunch of RGB vomit. Now, when I built this system, this is pretty much exactly the way I wanted it to look. I do like the rainbow effect, even though that might not be for you. I enjoy it and this computer sits on my desk. In fact, this is the PC that has edited every single one of the videos that you have seen here on BPS Customs over the past few months. But recently I have been playing, like a lot of you I'm sure, Cyberpunk 2077 and even though the game is pretty good, it clearly has some flaws. To be honest, I think the best thing to come out of it is the cyberpunk aesthetic and color scheme that CD Projekt Red has built inside of this virtual world. So with that in mind, let's try to make our editing PC into the craziest, most over the top, most cyberpunk themed build that we possibly can and we're gonna throw in some peripherals and a full desk set up to match. So how are we actually going to pull off the ultimate cyberpunk themed build? Well, first of all, let's start with the desk layout because that's probably the easiest. Razer recently partnered with CD Projekt Red to release a line of peripherals and desk mats that are cyberpunk themed, so I got one. This is the Razer Goliathus mouse mat. It's, I think, 900 by 400 millimeters. It is absolutely enormous. And not only that, but I got it customized. So, here is our cyberpunk themed mat that doesn't even fit on my table, but it has the BPS Customs logo on the bottom right hand corner, which I think is really cool. Next up is another limited edition item from Razer, the Cyberpunk 2077 edition of their Viper Ultimate Wireless. This is not only probably my favorite mouse currently to use, but is in the craziest, best looking colorway that I have ever seen a mouse come in. Even though this is limited edition, I haven't really been able to stop myself from using it because it just looks so cool on my desk. Not only that, it is probably one of, if not the best gaming mice on the market right now, especially for first person shooter type games. And it's gonna go freaking awesome in our setup if I could ever get it to sit on the dock. And there, there you go. The last peripheral is actually from Corsair. This is their new K100 RGB keyboard. I haven't yet set this up with an appropriate color scheme and profile, but we're gonna take care of that as soon as we get the PC up and running. This uses their new optical switches and these are incredibly fast with a super high polling rate and it's got some really cool features like this jog dial at the top where you can customize it to do different things on your PC depending on what you need. Peripherals are nice and all, but we also do need the PC to tie into this theme. And in order to make the interior of the case a little more cyberpunk-esque, I figure adding a seven inch LCD system info type screen to the interior, probably along this back wall is just going to be absolutely perfect, especially if we can theme it in that cyberpunk kind of mode. I've been working on IDA64 and I think I've come up with the perfect layout for a system sensor panel. And we're gonna pop it onto the screen 
and install the screen in the interior and I think that's really gonna set the system off. Also, a new set of cables is in order. And because these are from Ensource, I figured might as well call up Joey and see if he can make us a cable set that will replace these and also go with our new theme. And yes, yes, he can do that. These are some of the absolute sickest looking extension cables that I have ever seen in my life. They're yellow, purple, and kind of a teal color, and they match perfectly with the aesthetic that we are going for. Lastly, Cyberpunk is a very challenging game to run. So while the 3080 is nice, there is something that is a little bit nicer, and that's a 3090. This is from EVGA. This is their For the Win 3 Ultra card, and it is one of the best 3090s on the market. But um, I think we... We could even we can even do better than that. Two 3090s? That's just dumb. While Cyberpunk 2077 does certainly not take advantage of SLI, there are some other games that still do. Most notably, I guess like Red Dead Redemption 2 is the most prominent one right now. However, going with two 3090s is going to allow me to leverage them both in Adobe Premiere, which is something that I am looking forward to. Now, please note, this is really stupid. Don't do this at home. There is really no point in building an SLI system anymore. NVIDIA really doesn't support it, and a lot of game developers are just moving away from it entirely. The only real way to leverage two graphics cards in a system right now is actually not to rely on the SLI interface and instead just use them both independently for some kind of artificial intelligence or deep learning application or even some production workloads do use two cards. I don't know exactly what the benefit of using two 3090s in a system like this, where the heaviest thing that I'm doing is video editing. I don't know what kind of results that's going to give. And I'll be entirely honest with you guys, if I put this build together and the second 3090 is just sitting there doing nothing when I'm rendering out a video in Premiere, I'm gonna take it out of the system. However, I did say this was going to be the most absurd overkill system that you can build and I'm sticking to that promise. So, we have a couple things to do. First of all, we got two 3090s to put in here instead of our 3080, and we gotta swap over our cables to our end sourced units. But, the power supply that's in here is only a, a 1300 watt. I think we need to swap that out to a 1500 watt. I have a Dark Power Pro 1500 that is just waiting to be installed into this system. We then have to change over all the lighting effects to fit in with our theme. We have to install this rear sensor panel back here. And then we gotta set everything up on the desk and make sure that it looks really cool. I got a lot of work ahead of me today, so let's get down to it. The first task is going to be the power supply and the extension cables. Here is the Cooler Master V1300. It's a great power supply, but I'd like to be a little more certain when running two RTX 3090s that we're not gonna run out of juice. And as you can maybe tell, I am not one for cable management in my personal systems. I just change things out way too often to have to worry about tying everything together. And this mess was hidden behind that cable bar anyway, so it was actually pretty tidy before I took that off. Anyway, got to get this out, then we have to disconnect the PCIe cables, the 24-pin cable, and the two EPS 12-volt cables, and get those extensions in there. Well, I'm going to try to keep this as neat as possible, so we're going to use some ties and try to keep some of this wiring a little tight here, but look at these colors. These cables are sick, and we have so many PCIe connectors. Oh, God. All the cables are in. We've got our two EPS up top. We've got our 24-pin there. We've got our two 3-pin, three 3-8-pin three PCIe coming out of there that I'm gonna have to figure out once I install the graphics cards. But before I get this case too full of stuff, let's deal with this screen. So this is a seven inch screen. It is a touch screen. We're not gonna enable the touch functionality. We don't need it. Uh, it's gonna be going back here. And the this is for Raspberry Pi and it has mounts on the back here, little standoffs that we can actually use to fasten through these slats on the case. And I've already done a test fit here 
and two of these will line up perfectly and that's should be all we need I can't anticipate that we'll need more a more secure connection than that uh, but it's gonna fit right up in the back there and look pretty sick so let's get that installed first and then move on to the graphics cards there it is that is perfect I decided to route the wiring up so this HDMI and USB power wires and they are actually running behind the sensor panel and then down and out the top of the PCIe expansion brackets. The, the display is on standoffs, so uh, I basically just gaff taped those wires to the back of the PCB, and uh, that, should, uh, that should work really well. Looks really neat and fits perfectly. GPU is in place, wiring in place. I think this looks pretty freaking sick. I did notice, however, that one of my 413 cards is newer than the other one. This one is the original like red trim that everybody was up in arms about, so EVGA replaced the entire shroud with black trim. So now I have one red and one black. I'm gonna have to try to find a way to cover that red at some point, I guess, but I don't think it's that important because this just looks really, really good, and it's time to tidy up those wires in the back and fire this up and get the lighting up to speed. Well, that was quite an adventure from the last update to now this one when we are all done with this system and with this setup. I spent all night trying to get this PC to function properly and eventually I did, but SLI is way, way more of a liability now than it was a couple of years ago. And I can pretty definitively say that it's, it's definitely dead. As I did allude to earlier in this video, don't ever do this. This is stupid. While there is definitely still a good amount of allure and mystique to a setup like this, dual RTX 3090s, that's just an absurd amount of graphics horsepower. But functionally, it doesn't really provide any tangible benefit. I ran Cyberpunk, as you guys probably saw, and it was great. One RTX 3090, even though that game is very intense, is still enough to run it at decent settings and have a great experience. And adding the second one does literally nothing in that game. I did try out a couple of SLI titles like Quake 2 RTX and saw some real benefits there with utilization on both cards as you would expect from a proper SLI implementation. But just keep in mind that the vast majority of games being released 
from here on out will not at all support SLI. And that's just really unfortunate. I do miss the days when SLI was something to aspire to. This was like the PC builder's dream to have two of the top end graphics cards in one system pushing out a million frames of the hottest new game. And now it's just not something that you could really even do anymore. I struggled for hours and hours to even get this to function properly at all. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you probably saw a post that I just titled help because I could not figure out what exactly was going on. In the end, what I had to do was take down the TRX 40 Strix motherboard to gen three PCIe and reseat the graphics cards and swap out the SLI bridge and reinstall the drivers. It was just way, way too much. To be honest, you used to be able to pop two of the same GPUs in the system, hit apply in the NVIDIA control center, and then it was all good. You could just go in game, but for some reason, maybe just with this platform, or maybe I just had really bad luck, it took such an effort to even get this to produce any results at all. But still, we did accomplish our goal of building the ultimate cyberpunk themed battle station, including this awesome sensor panel that I think looks absolutely sick and captures all of our relevant system data. I'm gonna leave a link down below to a Dropbox where you can pull my setup file and all of my applicable assets to try to recreate this on your own. Just so that you guys know, this is a 600 by 1024 seven inch panel. And one other thing that turned out really great was our desk setup. I wish this Razer Goliathus mouse mat had stitched edges, which it doesn't, which means that it might fray at some point with heavy use. But the Corsair K100 is actually probably my favorite wrist rest of all time, a weird compliment, I guess, but it is super comfortable and is insanely fast. These are the fastest switches that I have ever used. So if you're down with cherry speeds or you really like fast actuation when you're typing or gaming, check out the Corsair K100. Their optical switches are no joke. And then the Razer Viper Ultimate is probably my favorite mouse right now. And the cyberpunk version of it is just amazing. So we had some successes, some failures with our RTX 3090 Ultimate Cyberpunk setup, but I think the colors came out awesome. I wanna say a big thank you to Joey at Ensource Customs for these cables that really set this build off. And the sensor panel I think came out great too. I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna leave this like this or not. I have to do some more experimenting in Adobe Premiere to see if this actually provides any real benefit. If it does, I'll probably leave it because I am working in Premiere a lot. And maybe uh, foolishly, I will hope that some more SLI titles are released within a reasonable amount of time when I can take advantage of running two of these graphics cards. So thank you so much for watching guys. This has been a great year for BPS Customs. Once again, hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna see more of this kind of crazy PC build content. Thank you for your support in 2020 and I will see you next year.